second. Great. Um, my name is Ross Yelsey. I'm an assistant director of admission and marketing here at Columbia Journalism School. I'd like to welcome all of you to this conversation about our full-time Master of Science program. Uh, it's our largest program at the school, one of our, you know, the programs that our school was really founded to provide this kind of essential training in journalism. And I'm really happy to have three guests with us today, including uh, George Miller, the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Churchill Donwe, uh, and Monica Montero, who are both uh, 2023 recent graduates of the MS program. So they're all here to talk more about the student experience in the program. But I think I'll turn it over first to George, who is an alum of the MS program, in addition to being the uh, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, to talk a bit about, you know, in a nutshell, what is the Master of Science program for people who are just maybe starting their kind of journey in exploring graduate programs at Columbia and other schools? What is our MS and how does that kind of stand apart from other programs in terms of what it provides students? Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming out today. It's nice to see you all, especially those of you who have your cameras on. It's great to, uh, to see your faces. Uh, like Ross said, I am an alum of the program. I graduated a long time ago um, and then recently rejoined the university. I just arrived here in July as the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Um, I think it's a really special place. Quite frankly, the, the experience that you'll have in the J School here is, is very unique and it's very different from what you'll find at other institutions. And I worked at other institutions and I can tell you um, some of the differences, but the, 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 the primary thing about this program and this institution is that it is a building full of journalists and people from uh, the career office through the faculty and the staff and everywhere in between, they're all journalists and most of them are continuing to be practicing journalists. And so the work that you do in your classes will be hands on and it will be real life on the streets, walking around New York City, talking to strangers, asking questions, getting information. And it's a pretty amazing place to do it. I think one of the things that really makes us special is that we emphasize the deep reporting. And so regardless of what platform or what medium you want to work in in the future, we give you the skills to be able to gather information and then to present across all platforms. And so pretty much from the time you arrive in August, you will be on the street talking to people. You'll be online digging in for, for information. And I think one of the great strengths of this institution is that we have an amazing wealth of people who are investigative reporters and long form reporters and they're they're deep 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 reporters and that's that includes audio folks and writers and photographers and videographers uh broadcasters and data anal um people who do data and data analysis and so i think that's that deep investigative reporting that deep um really digging for information is one of our great strengths here um yeah, sorry, I don't want to, I could go on and on, but Ross, tell me when to stop. Oh, no, no, uh, there's so much you can say about the program, but another cool thing about the program is that we really have a kind of a holistic program, right? The MS program, as opposed to maybe other programs people might be looking at, doesn't have like 15 different tracks you have to specify when you apply to it. It has kind of a, a big umbrella kind of curriculum that encompasses a lot of things. So for people who write into us and are interested, oh, can I do the magazine track or the broadcast track or the photojournalism track or the audio track? This is a program that has all of that kind of under the MS. And why do you think it's, um, you know, kind of a benefit that we don't maybe have it broken into so many sub programs, but have like this big, uh, you know, curriculum people can choose uh, classes from um, as opposed to have to specify when they come in what they want to do. Yeah. So at, at the core of everything is really that deep reporting. And, you know, we're not talking about walking up to people and asking them questions on the street. We're talking about going to people's homes, asking them questions, appearing at their offices. We're talking about delving for data and getting all that information. All of that stuff is the foundation for all sorts of presentation models. Um, whether you're going to do a good long form photo documentary package, you need to have an understanding of the topic at hand. There's always going to be written content that complements it. I come from photography. Uh, before I came to the J School, I was working as a photojournalist. I took a leave of absence to come here and then went back. And then when I went back, I was doing a little bit of everything, primarily photography, but also writing, reporting. Um, I wound up doing uh, videos and, and everything else. The, that reporting that we give you is the foundation for everything. You'll experiment with a lot of different tools through all of your classes, um, but it's that foundation and deep reporting that is what I think is the, the, the bedrock of what we are as an institution. 
And then you'll have opportunities to experiment with just about everything. And we'll talk about the actual curriculum and where all the different um, where all the different platforms and where all the different tools fit into your curriculum. Uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes here. Mm -hmm. Great. And as uh, George mentioned, um, it's a program that really starts with the fundamentals. So it's a great program for people who are either maybe a bit experienced in journalism, have worked in journalism for a while, or maybe just finishing college and are like really interested in pursuing this uh, professional path, or career changers who might have been working in all sorts of different fields, whether it's education or nonprofits or for profits or all sorts of backgrounds and want to make a change and want to learn all the fundamentals. So I thought I'd ask first uh, Churchill and then Monica a bit about their own um, kind of journey to the J School. Um, what inspired you to apply here and how did you figure out that the Master of Science was the right degree for what you wanted to do? And uh, Churchill, I think we'll start with you. Yeah, no, thank you, Russ. And it's nice to see some of all new faces applying to the program. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm literally on month twelve as a journalist. I come from finance and strategy world in healthcare, and so for me, this is a whole total change in my career. And I kind of during COVID season was in the middle of sort of thinking about what do I really want to do. I knew journalism was my passion, but I wasn't sure if I could do it. I wasn't really sure what the right program was. And so as I was going through my assessment, I was looking at NYU, I was looking at Berkeley, I was looking at, I'm sure some schools you are all looking at, um, I was sort of curious what was the right fit for me. I never even knew what magazine was or all of like the different tracks that I'm sure some of you already know, um, or audio. And so I, what I loved about the Columbia program was the idea that it was being so holistic that I could come in not knowing what I wanted to do. And within the fact that I could try audio, I could try portfolio, I could do all these different things kind of figure out for myself what I wanted to do. So to me, that was like a huge decision, especially for the fact that I had no clue about journalism. I mean, as I said, I'm still like rookie on 112 right now. Um, so to me, that was like how I made my decision. Great. And maybe just uh, before I uh, ask Monica, um, can you tell us a bit about what kind of inspired you to want to do journalism kind of at that point of working in a different field? What was then of the, the motivation you were feeling? Yeah, I've always like wanted to be a storyteller. I think, you know, I've always sort of had that urge, but I kind of was like, oh, I wasn't sure I was going to be good at it. I was, I always had this other, you know, what it was financial responsibilities that sort of kept me a little bit away from it. Um, and but I always knew in the core of who I am is that I wanted to give voice to people. Um, my beat primarily is, in, is immigration. And I always about giving voice to folks who usually don't have a voice. And so I, that was sort of, itching and I it was the itch was itching for so long I had to scratch it at some point and so that for me was a very important thing but honestly it was all about my whole route in J school was about giving voice to those who I think um were, were voiceless and to me it was um, African uh, immigrants mm -hmm. great thank you Churchill um Monica what was your kind of path here and how did you figure out the MS was right for you okay hi everyone I'm happy to see you all <laughs> um so I was also a bit of a career changer. I had I had like 10 years in the corporate world. Then I gr grew very bored of that. I began doing freelance journalism out of Madrid. Uh, so all in Spanish. Um, and I, I knew I wanted to do more, better reporting, maybe more investigative reporting in English. Um, so I started looking at different programs. I considered NYU, Newmark. I considered different ones, but I knew it would have to be in English. Um, and then I ended up being one of those people who only applied to Columbia for many reasons. Many of the reporters whose career, I mean, basically what I did is, like, okay, I, I, I would like to be this kind of a reporter. Um, what did they do? You know, and many of them had done this program. So I said, ooh, that's a, you know, that's a good indicator. Um, and then really just its reputation because I knew I needed, I needed more contacts, right? Um, I mean, in Spain, I, I knew editors, but I didn't know that many editors in the English speaking world. So I said, well, Columbia is reputed for its, um, for its, its network, I'll give it a go. And th then I had to decide, should I apply for MA, which is for people who have a bit more experience. And I had you know a few years experience as a journalist in Spain, or should I do the MS program, right? And I was really debating. I had almost, I had even begun both applications, like which one should I send? I think I spoke to Ross. And, um, and I also have a, a love for photojournalism and I didn't even know how to use a camera, okay? so. I was like, wow, and, and, and Ross explained, if you do MS, you can look into different formats, not only writing. And I was like, yeah, but I already know how to report. So I did MS. I'm very happy I did MS. I can tell you why later if you want, I can tell you now, but that's how I chose MS. Yeah. 
Yeah, then we'll talk a bit about the experience in a in a few. But for now, I think I'll um share a visualization of what the curriculum looks like for the MS to help demystify a little bit about the program for people who are, you know, new to uh to the school and the way that you know this particular curriculum works, which is pretty unique in the sense that it has modules um as opposed to maybe just full semester classes that people might be more used to from different types of college or graduate school experiences. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick, and then I think George will uh, help us kind of walk through the the two semesters for the MS. One second here. Great, so here's our visualization. Um, George, you wanna talk a bit about the fall and then kind of go through um, just the modules as they progress and kind of how this has been designed to help people really uh, become professional journalists in nine and a half months? Okay. So I don't, I don't know if this looks intimidating. I think many of our students, when they get here and they start hearing about all the work, and I see Churchill smiling right there, um, it, 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 it's pretty intense. And it's a lot of work from the get-go, but it's all built and designed really to scaffold a knowledge base within you so that you are given tools and you're given more tools, and then you're building upon that and building upon that. And at the foundation of everything, like I said, it's really all about that reporting and specifically real deep um, research and, and deep reporting. And so when you arrive on campus in August, you'll start with the reporting class. Uh, most of the students will have a balance of audio training at the beginning and a little bit of uh, reporting. Uh, and then after Labor Day weekend, we really get deep into the reporting class. And we also start with the investigative techniques class. The investigative techniques class is really more about research and finding information, finding databases, uh, filing FOIA reports so that you can um, get further information. And so the first nine weeks of our program, two weeks during August and then seven weeks during the fall semester, you're pretty intensely working with your professors. Your reporting module will meet for one and a half days a week, and then your investigative techniques class will meet in the evening. And on Fridays, you'll take law and ethics during the first, or you'll take law and ethics one during the first half of the semester and the other during the second half of the semester. And so uh, reporting and investigative investigative techniques really kind of builds that skill set. We are looking for real deep nitty gritty people who are going to go out on the street, feel comfortable asking questions, um, sticking cameras in people's faces, sticking microphones uh, into strangers faces. And it's a pretty amazing experience. You may be thinking right now to yourself, I'm not that person. I'm an, I'm an, I'm an introvert and I'm not used to going up and talking to strangers. We'll give you the skills to do that. It's it's a it's a skill set, and the more that you do it, I, I see Monica and Churchill uh, smiling. The more that you do it, you become accustomed to it. And I've been uh, a journalist for thirty some odd years, and I feel quite comfortable talking to anybody everywhere, much to my wife's um, chagrin. So the second half of the semester, we take all of the reporting, uh, that foundation, and that digging, and that research. Uh, and we start to really implement it. And you will write during your reporting class and in your investigative techniques class. But during the second half of the fall, we really start to focus on putting all of these things together. So you develop that writing, you, you develop that reporting skill, and then you really start to complement it with uh, the presentation models, first in the written word and then in the image and sound classes. For image and sound, you have the option of taking audio, photo, video, or data. And so you can complement um, and experiment, quite frankly. Uh, and then in the second half of the seven, seven, um, the second seven weeks, you'll take the other class. If you took law in the first half, you'll take ethics or vice versa. Uh, also during the fall semester, you will begin your master's project. And the master's project is an in-depth study of an idea, essentially a magazine length project. Uh, not necessarily presented as a magazine style story, but the idea is to do a long form, you know, um, deep dive into a, a a project, into a story. Um, you'll start that. We just we just launched it with our uh, students here this semester last week. And so they're just now kicking off with their projects and those master's projects will be due in the first week in March. And so they'll be working on them for the next four or five months. Mm -hmm. Should I go into the spring? 
Great. Uh, or just one, maybe we'll, before we do that, I'll ask um, Monica and Churchill if there's any highlights. You don't have to go through class by class, but any any things you wanted to uh, to tell us about in terms of um, in classes you selected under the Image and Sound or in the writing class and what your reporting experience was like that first semester. Yeah, no, um, I think for me, I, I again, the getting into the streets and being people's faces was very strange. Uh, and that was a day one activity. Um, and so to someone who has never, again, no rep reporting skills, having to go and ask people about their neighborhood. I, I was centered in the Bronx and I had to report about a neighborhood I've never been in. And so walking up to a stranger on the street and just saying, hey, can I ask you a question? Was very intimidating. Um, it's a lot of sweating you do <laughs> doing just because of the of nervousness. Um, so, but eventually, again, it's just now I, I, I don't mind it. You, you build the skill. Uh, for my image and sound, I, I did writing for the ear, uh, which is an audio very, I I had way too much fun in that class. One of my the best classes I had here, I'll, I'll be honest, because it was just such a creative way of reporting the news, but also having to add the flavor for it as entertaining. So think about it like um, the daily of the New York Times kind of uh, energy. So I, I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Great, how about you, Monica? Sure, um, I have a lot to say, but I'll be quick. Um... Okay, I'm being very sincere. There were times that I was like, is this Navy SEAL training or is this journalism? It was so grueling, but I loved it. Like for me, it's fun. I'm like, George, I will talk to anyone. This is why I love journalism. I'm just curious. I love to meet people. I will talk to anyone. And you can do that with journalism. I had lots of classmates like Churchill, who's a really good friend, by the way, who were petrified to speak to people. And, you know, you get over it. It's fine. The one thing I really enjoyed about this program, and you're all gonna be like, how did you enjoy this? Is that um, I think it's it's very fast paced and you're always frustrated because you know you could have done a better job. But the point is that you make a lot of mistakes, right? You only have five days to hand in, I don't know, a thousand words. You have to find people who wanna speak to you and then people ghost you and you're like, oh my gosh, this person promised me the interview. Suddenly you show up, they don't. people will ghost you. Um, people don't wanna speak to you. It, it just everything that goes wrong goes wrong and then you have this deadline and you get very nervous but this is fun and that means that when you finish um, J school they can put you anywhere in the world and you're like I will get the story it's fine it, it just after you get ghosted and everybody says no and everybody you know just forgets to show up after week two okay migrants I had to interview migrants so Sunday it was like minus 10 degrees um it took me an hour to get there 8 a.m they didn't show up I'm like oh god this happens to you every single week and every single week. You're like, okay, I just have to survive until Thursday. I have a deadline. And suddenly two more days, like, how am I going to survive? So it felt like Navy SEAL training, but it was so much fun because it is a lot of fun. I mean, journalism is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And um, as far as image and sound, when I was trying to figure out what should I do, I saw that there was this program called Visual Craft Track. And basically it's, if you want to learn a bit more about photojournalism, video journalism, in a more poetic cinematic way, right? Not just like Sky News or I don't know, um, New York One. So I applied for that. I was really happy I got in and I did a lot of photo and I did a lot of video and that was my image and sound. And I loved it, I absolutely loved it. So much so that I did more photo in the second semester, but I'll be quiet now. <laughs> I don't think so. And one thing, um, just talking about the fact that journalism is so different than other academic pursuits, you don't have like midterms and final tests and, you know, final research papers, but you're doing a lot of journalism. And as Monica and Churchill have talked about, it's not a, a thing that involves, you know, total control. You can't control the situations. People don't show up. Not everything works out on the time frame that you have to get things done. So for that reason, I think, um, and other reasons, this program is uh, done with a pass-fail grading system. So it's not, you know, letter grades that you're trying to earn A's and B's and, you know, different uh, grades in the classes. So I, in some ways that I hope takes the pressure off of trying to get perfection every time, because as we know, it's a, a profession where you can't always uh, get perfection if it ever existed at all um, when it comes to journalism. Did that affect kind of your um, ex uh, kind of experience too? Um, I guess, Monica, since you just uh, answered the last question, how did that affect your... Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, absolutely. Because you know that you, I mean, because it's pass fail, you, I, I think it's like, you know, when you, I don't know, if you serve in tennis, you get two shots to serve. So usually the first time people try to do something crazy, it doesn't work. And they always have the second shot. And I feel that's like with this program, you can really test yourself. You can really say, I'm going to try to get this story. And 
I mean, if you really try your best and you learn a lot, I think professors are more worried about you actually reporting than come, you know, bringing in the most perfect story. And so it allows you to make a lot of mistakes and that's when you learn a lot. So I really, I really like the, 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 the system. Mm -hmm. Great. So that was, uh, oh, yeah. The, the, I, mean, I was going to just add, I mean, also like, so the pressure of like a grading system, you don't have that, oh, I have to have an A, I have to have uh, A plus, uh, I don't know. but I do, I do totally agree that I, it, professors do want to see you succeed. And I mean, that's like one of the huge part about this program is that, you know, if you did a story and it didn't work out how you thought it was going to work out, you you have the chance just to walk shop it with your professor and sort of help you work out what can we learn from this and how to walk you through. So there's no pressure that I have to have an A plus the first time I do a story. It's sort of how can I put my best foot forward? So I think the A, the pass and fill was really good. Sort of, I, I don't have to be a report card kind of person. I just have to focus on my reporting. Can I add one more thing quickly? Sure. Because Churchill just said something. It's true. Every single professor, I was amazed at how welcoming and receptive and helping they were. Um, the classes are really small. And that I thought was wonderful because it really makes a difference. So that I really like that about this program. Great. Thank you to you both for that insight. And so now as we've been talking, um, people have probably been looking at this calendar and now they're seeing this spring semester, which starts in January and um we have some big classes, some longer classes, and some uh, kind of smaller modules again. George, do you want to give an overview of the spring for the MS class? Sure. So you'll take three more classes in the spring semester. It's actually four classes. You'll take two seminar and production classes, and I'll tell you about those in one second. And then just like the way that you flipped law and ethics in the uh, fall semester, you'll flip history and the business in the spring semester. And so at any given time, you'll be taking three classes. Uh, like, 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 like both Monica and Churchill said, uh, our classes are small, you know, um, at most you'll have 15 or 16 students in a class, but if there are that many, we usually have two instructors there. And so the contact that you will have with your professors will be quite intimate. You'll be spending a lot of time with them. For the seminar classes, we try to run those on Mondays and Tuesdays for the most part. The production classes we run on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. The seminar classes, everything you do in all of your classes is built around journalism and producing journalism. But when we talk about seminars and production or seminar versus production, it's really about the seminars are usually, they meet for a shorter length of time. You talk about ideas, you talk about more uh, theory, and then you take that theory and you apply it to your journalism. So you'll take classes like uh, narrative storytelling or journalism of ideas, um, and then rather than spending all of your time in the classroom writing, you spend more time in the field gathering and more time doing research. For the production classes, the production classes are usually photography, audio, video, uh, or multimedia, some combination thereof. And those classes will often meet from nine to five or 10 to four, 10 to five, something like that. They'll have a longer schedule. And that longer schedule is really designed to do a mix. You'll have You'll have class time where you'll actually sit down and you'll talk about ideas. Why are we doing this? How should we go about it? Should we work as a team? What's the overall mission here? And then you'll also spend a lot of time actually gathering in the field and, um, and doing research in the classroom. And so you'll take a lot of time to produce, but then you'll also critique and workshop a lot of your stories and your projects. Uh, and, and, and like both uh, Monica and Churchill said, you'll spend a lot of time with your faculty members talking through the work that you create to make sure that everything is as good as it, as it can possibly be. All of our instructors are pretty amazing journalists. They're very well connected people. Um, we wind up getting a lot of work published. We're not supposed to talk about that too much um, because the emphasis is really supposed to be on doing everything now. Um, but we do wind up getting a lot of our student work published in pretty amazing places. Um, and then, like I said, you'll balance uh, history with uh, with uh, business or flip flop over, over the course of the semester. And of course, during the spring semester, you'll wrap up your master's project um, right before spring break so that during spring break, you can go out and you can breathe and sit on the beach and um, and catch your breath a little bit for a very small window. <laughs> and as people see this January block that says master's project, they might think, oh, do I have to be doing a master's project class during that time? Or is that the case or are people just out doing the reporting and working with their advisor kind of on their own schedule during that time? Yeah, you'll see, you'll see. Um, 
uh, it's it's and, and Monica and Churchill can probably tell you uh, better, but it is uh, the master's project is a pretty intense project. It's um, um, you need to find an ambitious idea. Your advisors will be demanding um, your stories. You'll find good stories, and it warrants doing the heavy work to make it a reality. And so that will start with a lot of idea generation in the fall, with some planning and some early interviewing and some research and background. Um, but you're also in the fall very busy with your classes, which means you'll probably get started with your master's project in depth, probably in December. And, you know, some of our students will go away during the winter break, but uh, it's also a really smart time to get the groundwork done on your master's project. And so the first couple of weeks of January before classes begin, you know, in the middle of January after Martin Luther King Day, um, it's a really good time. Those two and a half weeks are a really good time to start knocking on doors, talking to people, start writing, working with your advisors. You won't have formal classes, but that's a that's a really important time for you to be 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 heavy at work. Mm -hmm. People sometimes ask too about the master's project, about whether it's something you could go all over the world to report, or is it something we would really want you to report on in the area around New York so you can um, return to those sources, get more material kind of over that span of time. Um, I think that's why we usually like say it should be something more in the region, right, in terms of what people will report on. Yeah, you'll you'll find that your to, to do a good project that way, you're going to need to tap into your sources repeatedly over and over and over again. And so as you're working on your projects, you may need to go back out to locations, out to scenes and talk to people and catch up with them over and over and over again. And so it kind of behooves you to find something within the tri-state region and preferably something within the five boroughs. Mm -hmm. Great. And before I turn this back over to Churchill and Monica, I thought I would just clarify, you know, based on what Monica was saying about the uh, visual craft check, that's one exception. That's something we've offered in certain years people could apply to um, if they are admitted to the school, to the MS program, if they want to potentially do that in the fall. But otherwise, uh, just to clarify for people in the MS, uh, the general program, you don't have to ever like declare a other type of specialization, like I'm doing audio only, I'm doing visual only, I'm doing writing only. You can experiment with a lot of different things. Is that right, George? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Yes. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one thing that makes our uh, program pretty cool is that is for people who might be watching this now and are thinking, I know I really want to do video or audio or writing. Um, you can definitely follow that track as you go through it, as you choose those classes and the modules. But uh, you can also, um, you know, change your mind. Uh, as people have been saying, like, uh, I think Monica, learning about things over the course of the fall that they want to explore more deeply in the spring, you're able to do that without feeling like you've been hemmed into one particular area of journalism at the outset of beginning the program. So that flexibility is another, I think, really cool part of the MS uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. Great. And I'll turn it over to Churchill and Monica again to talk a bit about some highlights, um, whether it's certain classes you took um, uh, in the time you were here, certain professors, certain projects that really were memorable, really like things you're really proud of um, over the course of your time in the Columbia MS program. Um, Churchill, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, but I think Monica is smiling because we probably, she and I had, um, <laughs> I was the same spring class, which is the book writing class. And so when she talked about the deadline of producing a 2000 word essay every week, that mm -hmm. was us and having, yeah, 3000 word essay every week and having to read eight books in the matter a couple of uh, a month before the spring semester, that was quite of the, the rigor, but also I think one of the fun classes. So for me, since we're talking about the spring semester, I took two two main classes. One was investigating healthcare, which is taught by uh, Charles Olson, one of the top um, uh, editors at ProPublica. And then I took the book writing course, which is um, taught by Sam Friedman. And both courses are very demanding, very rigorous, very high um, <laughs> high expectation from the professors in the sense that they want you to bring your best foot forward and they'll push your writing, they'll push your reporting. Um, they will, there's no slacking. Um, and, and so for me, those were really a tough spring semester at that your master's project reporting on top of that. Um, uh, and, but I think from one of the stories I did in my investigating healthcare class is getting published next week, um, in the, in New York focus. Um, and so like we did and, and that happened because after, after I was graduated, I, I graduated, I was still working with a professor I was asking questions. And that's one thing I loved about that. And then the book writing class, um, it was, we wanted to learn about being a reporter, is trying to create a story that's fully fleshed 
in one week. Um, every 3,000 was due every Sunday. But I think, again, Navy SEAL training is a really good way to put it, Monica. But you come off of that knowing very well how to just first get a job. How do you go about reporting? First day in a new environment, how do you sort of navigate a new city? Um, and those were skills that I believe those two classes taught me very well. Um, and I know folks about the idea of audio versus long form piece in terms of writing magazine. I like the fact that I took audio, I took book writing, I took, I tried to do everything to take different tastes of different things, primarily because I think now as a reporter, when I go in the field, I am, my, my, my anthers are going, hmm, this could be a part of a little audio component. Oh, I can do a little photo piece with it. So you have all these different antennas working at the same time, which I think helped because I took almost every lane. Everything I didn't take was photo, uh, was the photo, which I am very sad about, but Monica, I can always call on Monica to teach me. Yeah. And Monica, so tell us a bit about um, your photo experiences and your, your book writing experiences and all the other experiences that sure. for you. So I think um, as far as highlights of the program, the first one is that I, I went into the program kind of worried, right? I'm like, oh God, journalism, everyone I know is getting laid off. Um, the fake news is everywhere. Nobody even, everybody's on social media. Like, am I spending money on, on something stupid, you know? Um, and from day one, I was really pleased to see that journalism is very much alive. And at J School, I definitely, every single day, I, I have a little book where I wrote down, I have to see this movie, I have to speak to this person. Every single day I wrote something down that was just very inspiring of something but tangible to do. Um, so that was my highlight for the whole year. I, I was really pl pleased to see that journalism is very alive. And though it's a difficult industry, um, that was my main thing. As far as classes, like Churchill said, I also did the book writing course um, because I've been trying to write this book. But I was really um, pleased that I think some of the best reporting I learned was in the book writing class, just, just because of how that Professor Sam Friedman structures the class and pushes you and the attention he gives. It was incredible. The other class I did was photojournalism. Um, and as, as we mentioned in the beginning of the call, reporting is the main focus. So at some point, yes, you learn how to, you know, you learn how to tell stories through photo or video or audio, but it's always a reporting. Um, all the guest speakers throughout the entire year, the professors, the guest speakers, even my classmates. I mean, there was not a day that I wasn't like, wow, I'm so lucky to be in this program. I'm just learning so much. And just one more thing. Um, the second semester is, for me, excruciatingly difficult because you can only choose two classes. But there were at least five that I was literally drooling over. I mean, you'll see them. And like, how do I choose? You can't. So... Um, then sometimes there's a schedule conflict, I'm like, okay, all right, well, it's not my fault. I can't take this because it coincides with this class, but it's really difficult and, um, to choose classes because they're all just so good. And then, so what I did for the classes that I really regretted not being able to take, I just met with the professors and I'm still in touch with them now. Right. And you can always meet with anyone, which is fantastic. Um, I took some notes mm -hmm. and, oh yeah, just one last thing you mentioned also, Ross, that for the master's project, you you know you're really encouraged to find a local story, and that drove me crazy because I'm very international. I'm in Europe right now, and my mom's from Korea. And anyway, so I was like, oh. But um, there's a trick to that because there's many people who are very frustrated with that in the MS program. Is that it's New York, and every single global issue, maybe not every single, but many global issues, have some kind of version of it in New York, right? So. Um, I don't know, my dream still is to go to a refugee camp somewhere in the world. So there aren't any refugee camps in New York, but there are many people who are coming into New York in you know, for the same reasons that people end up in refugee camps. So you just have to kind of find the local story of what really makes your heart tick, you know, and you will in New York, you will. And there's professors to help you with that. So that's it. I mean, I have lots of highlights. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. And I didn't uh, put a question out in in, uh, in advance about this, but about the master's project. I know George talked about it a bit and Monica, you just did for uh, Churchill and Monica, just more um, a bit about your journey and that you don't have to get into the specifics of the story. But, you know, was this an idea that you 
had pursued, were thinking you were going to pursue when you got here, or was it something you developed once you kind of started talking to faculty and working with your advisor? Just generally, what was that process like uh, developing your master's project here? Yeah, my master's project was thanks to Monica, honestly. Um, <laughs> that's how I, like, like I, I was, I had, I had heard about the master's project. I was a little bit intimidated by this. I was thinking like, it's like your life thesis, like this is what the world's going to know me by um, kind of project. That's how I sort of thought about it coming into J school. Um, and when I got to it, I wasn't really sure. Honestly, I didn't have a clear sense of what I wanted it to be, what I wanted to do. And so I started, it started with little conversations. As I really think what the advice Monica gave is really great that you can find global issues in smaller forms in New York City. Um, and so for me, I knew I was interested in, in immigration, but I was like, okay, so what does that mean? Um, how, how do you even, how do you narrow that to a topic? Okay, immigration. And I was started trying to find different stories with immigrants, but Monica, and then one day <laughs> in the same basement, um, I was telling Monica the frustration I was running into. And she's like, oh, have you thought about doing this? Have you thought about going here? And that changed the course of my, of, 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 of my, um, my master thesis project. So I think that's also a component of it that's like collaboration between students happens a lot too. Like you're you're all going through the same experience. And so sometimes someone might find something that well they don't want to pursue, but it might be of interest to you. And in this case, you know, we were both we both work on, on immigration and I specifically want to focus on Af African immigration. And she was like, oh, have you thought about going to this um to this party? Have you thought about following this person? And that really honestly changed how my master's project uh, came out and now it is actually publishing chalk mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we everybody does help each other. It's it's really fantastic. Um, okay, so for my master's project, I was one of those people that were really stressing because I could not find a story. And I was meeting with my mentor, and um, every story I came up with, he's like, mm -hmm. I wasn't excited about anything. Eventually, I did find something. Um, which is related to migration. It just coincides that we're really interested in migration, Churchill and I. And um, and yeah, and it was, I, I have to be very honest, it was really difficult to do the master's project and your second semester classes at the same time. So um, when I did find my story, I just ran with it. Um, I, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you what it was, but anyway, my advice with the master's project is start as soon as you can, start as soon as you can and start reporting on it as soon as you can. And just really, you know, try to work on it because the sooner you get it done, the more you will sleep. And it just, it's it's difficult to handle it all at the same time, but everybody does it. Um, yeah, I don't know, does, does that answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> and the nice thing too, I mean, I see people, so people might think that because this is this big project it's what you like turn in on the final day of classes, but that's not the case. It's something you turn in in March. So you are done with that um, and you still have um, more than about two months still of uh, classes to take for your seminar and production and other stories you're doing for that and looking at the career expo and other opportunities at the school. So it isn't like exactly like the thing that lives over you the whole time as like maybe a final paper for like um, a big um, like dissertation would for like some other programs. So it kind of is, uh, it's done before you are done with the program. And the cool thing too, that I think um, maybe Churchill, you mentioned yours uh, is published in Chalkbeat, but it's something that even though you turn it in that day in March, it can be something you can continue to go back to if you didn't get everything you were hoping to get right in that time frame. If you want to keep working on that, it can be a living kind of project even after the day of the turn-in date uh, for the school, which is nice too. So yeah, people should feel like it's a it's something that they can, it's not the last day if they don't want it to be um, the day you turn it in. Great. Um, and so um, just to demystify the school a bit too, I know people, you know, maybe have never been to Columbia Journalism School or Columbia's campus. So as George mentioned, we're in Pulitzer Hall where I am and, and George and Churchill and I are all in this building at different floors right now. It's eight stories and it all has journalism going on on every floor, which is really cool. Whether it's audio, visual, writing, investigative data, it's all happening in this one building. Um, what's it like to be a member of the student community, um, you know, taking, you know, all your classes in this building, going to events, all sorts of other um, social gatherings. What's kind of like the life like for a journalism student on top of the coursework we've already talked about? Uh, Churchill, do you want to start with that? Yeah, no, I I think, you know, for me, I love the fact that I learned so much from students 
who came from different parts of the world. Um, I think just how they thought they have, their approach to just just adjusting to a new city helped me learn about a city that I've been living in now for six years. Um, and so to me, I really, as a student, I enjoyed that I could meet someone from another part of the world that I never thought I would meet and how very close we got very intimately because of how very, um, no, I you know because it we're, we're we're going through the same experience, so it helps to talk to each other, and so you form some really great bonds. Like Monica's one of my quite good friends now, um, because we went through the trenches in book writing, um, but a lot of those kind of relationships happen. Um, I also, you know, I was part of the the Black um, Columbia group at J School, and also part of the Black Columbia group and Columbia as a whole, which it was just, I, I you know that was also very important to me to make sure I felt like I belong in the space. Um, to also be able to do other things that I thought was more community based in like, for example, me being a black student and having those six spaces to do to experience, have my own experience. So I think Columbia did provide that. The J School had um you know part of the NFBJ which is a national association for black journalists there are all of those different groups um that also meet within the J school and sometimes they actually invite speakers so you have the opportunity to sort of engage in that way additionally out of Colombia there's the you know the, the grad programs also have other meet meeting uh, what's it called meet and greets so you get to experience with other grad schools if you want to um and also it's it's new york city you live in like this is new york i don't think there's anything greater than new york city and so you get a chance it can be tough but you get a chance to experience one of the best cities in the world um with wonderful people and you make some really great friends outside of the j school yourself so to me i really enjoyed the international aspect of it and the fact that i get to meet wonderful people like like monica um and as part of the program yeah monica what was your experience like Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with Churchill. I remember our first day in orientation, they asked everyone what country you're from. And I think it was 49% of us, or maybe even 51% that weren't from the United States. And I was really happy because like Churchill said, like an ethics class, when you were looking at how, you know, know, some media outlet covered a certain story, somebody from another continent will raise their hand and be like, well, I don't know, this is how I see it. And everyone in the room's like, Hmm, you have a point. So yeah, definitely different perspectives um, make the program really interesting and rich. You learn a lot from the people around you. Um, the journalism school is open 24 hours a day, which is fantastic because when you have to work on a Sunday, you can just meet with people there. Um, the, the campus is just beautiful. And like Churchill said, you know, you can meet with other schools. I I went to astronomy talks whenever I had time. I mean, there's there's a planetarium. It's really nice. Columbia is incredible. Um, I met philosophy students. I mean, it's just um, when you have time, to be very honest, you don't really have a lot of time. But when you do, meeting with other students is really interesting. And and then every single week at the J School, there is at least two events. So panel discussions, documentary screening, screening, and you can speak to the journalists who did that story, whatever kind of story it was afterwards. So you're really in touch with incredible professionals who were like you, like me still, like, whoa, okay, how do you do this? And then you see them produce this incredible work. You're like, well, how did you do that? So every week, I mean, it was impossible to go to everything that I really appreciate it. There's always people in the building. You're like, wow, is that so-and-so? Yes, that's so-and-so. Wow, I want to speak to that person. And that, that I really liked about J-School. Great, thank you. And George, going back to you, you are also an alum, as we mentioned, of the MS program. Can you talk a bit about, you know, in the years that have transpired since you got your degree, what are some of the skills that you feel were the most valuable that you gained here that you still use in your work, uh, whatever that may be, um, you know, day to day? You don't know what I do every day? I have a, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you, like, like Monica and Churchill said, I think one of the amazing things about this place is the student body. Um, my roommates from when I was here a long time ago, um, they've gone off and my one roommate was the head of, you know, uh, the CBC Digital and was head of ABC Digital for a while. And so the people who you will be sitting next to in your classes who you know, in that fall semester where you're all sitting there nervous and your palms are a little bit sweaty and you're starting to think about all the work that you have to do, all of those people who are going through the that that same exact exact anxiety, 
they're all going to go off and be superstars and they're going to do amazing things. And it's really inspiring to be around those people. When you leave, you're never really gone. Um, Churchill literally still here. Um, but many people, you know, you're still part of the family. When I graduated, my reporting instructor was a guy named Michael Shapiro. And when I, when we finished our reporting class at the end of the semester, he said, I want to thank you all. This has been amazing. And he's like, you know, now you are part of the Shapiro Mafia. You are part of the family. And if you ever need anything, you can contact me anytime. And through the, over the past 25 years, I've reached out to him numerous times about just about everything. Uh, I spent the last few years in Tokyo before coming here. And, um, and I reached out to him and I told him that I was going over there because when he was uh, prior to being a professor here, he had been based out of Tokyo for a while. And so we compared notes. Um, that community of people, I think, is really pretty magical. When I was based in Tokyo, I did programming. And one of my best friends who was in this program, a guy named Patrick Barda, he's the enterprise editor for the Wall Street Journal based in uh, Bangkok. We did programs where he spoke to my students in, uh, in Japan. And so you never really leave the, the family. But I think the biggest thing that I took away from my time at Columbia was you'll find that journalism programs are at their root, they have the same intentions. You know, journalism is an altruistic industry where we're out there trying to do the best work for the audiences who are absorbing our information. But I think what makes us different is we are, we go deeper, we go farther into stories. You will have classes with some of the most amazing professors who are the most amazing journalists in the world. And so rather than just thinking about producing for the next day, the next week, the next newscast or whatever, you're really thinking about what am I doing now as a journalist? How am I shaping the industry? How am I doing and modeling what is the best way to go about journalism? And I think ultimately what happens and Churchill and Monica, I think are, you know, the, the next generation of leaders in the industry. And I think that's what defines the, the Columbia graduates, the people who come out of this school will go off and they'll do amazing things. And then they'll be the next generation of editors, the newsroom leaders, the people who are shaping the industry. And I think that's that's the most amazing thing about this place. Great, thanks, George. And yes, uh, Monica and Churchill, you're only about three, three months or so out of the program, but can you tell us a little bit, maybe Monica, then Churchill, about what you are currently doing and kind of what skills already are from what you've done at Columbia have been helpful in your current pursuits? Sure. Okay, so um, when you finish J school, it's very daunting. You're just like, oh, what am I going to do? I don't have an internship. I don't have a job. But um, it always works out. And I was lucky to get a grant from the Pulitzer Center. And um, basically, I said, okay, I would love to go to northern France, you know, in Calais, where all the, lots of people from all over the world try to get to England on a small boat. And since I'm really interested in migration, um, I had learned that the UK is trying to pass the Rwanda asylum plan. So basically, if you arrive in the UK illegally, they illegally means without, you know, refugee status or without pa papers, they want to send people to Rwanda and Rwanda will decide if you deserve asylum or not. Um, so it's very messy. It's still not clear if it will happen. But I said, OK, if if I could go to Calais, I want to ask people in Calais who have like, risked their lives for the past two, three months going through Africa, Middle East, everywhere. Um, what do you think about this? You know, and I had begun reporting on migration in New York. I'd done a lot of interviews with Venezuelans who had come in, you know, through eight different countries past the border. And thanks to Governor Abbott in Texas, got a free bus ride to New York. So I knew a lot about that kind of migration. I had no idea about migration in Europe. So when I got the grant, I was so happy. And I went on a pre-reporting trip in July to Calais. And I quickly saw that it's much worse, much more horrible than I ever imagined it would be. What you see in the newspaper isn't, I mean, it's, it's really bad. And so then I spent um, all of September, basically one week in Calais, um, interviewing lots of people there. Um, and then I went over to England and many of the people I met have made it over to England. So I, I said, okay, I want to interview you in England. So I took train rides all over England and I interviewed them and I spoke to many experts, NGOs. So I'm, I'm really in the field and I, I never would have dreamt that I could be doing, and this is literally my dream. So I'm so happy about that. Um, now I have to work on pitching the stories, which is what I'm going to do now. 
Um, and I hope that works. I mean, uh, this is journalism, right? So you have to, I mean, honestly, you have to understand something. You have to get used to rejection. You have to get used to nobody caring about your story, about anything. Um, you can't take anything personally because <laughs> professors can be really like direct and, but you just have to love your story. So you, you don't care. You just, you really want to do it, right? And like Churchill said, you want to speak to these people who are in these situations. Well, there's different kinds of journalism, but the kind that we do, that you're like, this is terrible. I, I have to, I, you know, people has, have to know what you're going through. And, and you know, how can your situation be improved? Um, so thanks to this grant, that's what I've been doing in September. Now I'm going to work on pitching the stories and and I'm also doing a lot of photo photojournalism on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, I need a lot more experience, but I was um, in there's this incredible photojournalism um, event in Perpignan called Visa pour l'image, and I went. I met so many different photojournalists. It was so inspiring. But again, I wouldn't have known about this if I hadn't done J school. Um, and part of my reporting, I did a lot of photographs, which I don't know if I can get them published, but. I was able to report on the field in photo and that that's what I'm doing right now. Did you have any other part of your question? No, that was, that was good. Uh, good answer. Yeah. And Churchill, I know you are in our building right now. What are you up to and, and what's been uh, useful so far in terms of uh, things you learned um, in your new venture? I know I loved it so much that I decided to just stay in the building. Um, <laughs> and so I think this is also a good way to plug in. So one of the, the exclusive um, fellowships you get as part of being um, part of this program is the Columbia Journal Journalism Investigations. It's sort of a, a kind of a newsroom model where it partners with an external newsroom. So right now, um, I'm just work with Reuters, um, and you sort of work on, on different projects. And there's three main arms to it. There's the Global Migrations Project, which focuses on immigration, climate change, and gender issues, which is what I'm 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 a fellow in. And then there is the um, cross-border data migration which deals with sort of it's a huge data project across multiple borders literally that and then you have uh the third arm was just a normal fellowship and they sort of focus on different things depending on the year um and so for me i really i was one of those people who because i was sort of distracted a little bit i didn't really meet my internship deadlines and, and apply for things so the ability that this was something that was exclusive to just columbia students and you apply to it um and you get to work the same style for newsroom um so for me that was that was a really great opportunity and hence why i'm still in the building i will be in the building for the next 10 months um but i think you know i was just thinking about how in this question like last week i had to cover um uh, the un and you know we think about being a drop in the middle of something that's a lot of things going on in, in, in the unga um i felt i was a little bit intimidated but i was felt prepared and i felt prepared because i sort of understood a little bit more of like being a reporter in the field on day one because that's really happened before i spent a couple of months ago just being dropped in the middle of the Bronx I have to report and I kind of thought about it that same way so the skill of being able to just move into a field and be in a room with with 100 plus reporters was just very exciting to me to see how they were capturing different things learning um so to me I think that was a really great opportunity um but a lot of my focus right now is like if I were trying to do data exploration which again baseline for the program reporting which i a lot of time is picking up the phone reaching out to a stranger and figuring a way to finesse someone and give you the, what you're looking for and to me that's a very like very very important skill the ability to report especially in a, something you have zero clue about which is kind of what i i, I work into so right now for example i'm trying to work trace different finance organizations that are tied to climate change i didn't know anything about climate change so Quickly, I have to, because I'm well skilled now, I have to like, I understand, just pick up the phone and call, find this next person and being able to talk to a stranger randomly um, are things that I felt um, 10 months ago, 12 months ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And that's kind of the, again, reporting is the baseline foundation of the program for your ability to just quickly be in a, in a, a new topic and quickly pick it up. And so I, I immersely, grateful i honestly uh for sort of that, that this kind of that kind of kind of training because that's like my to go now especially when you're doing stuff like immigration and then having to track different people in different places you know i also have to talk to someone to tell you a very difficult story um you know how do you sort of get them to open and trust you i think those are very baseline skills that the program teaches well mm -hmm. 
Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so it looks like the uh, the application deadline for people who are watching this for the MS program will be December 15th. So there's a good amount of time for people who are watching this and are thinking about joining the next class of MS students uh, to put together an application. I thought to kind of close, I could ask all three of our, um, our guests today if there's any advice they would give about um, putting together a good application uh, for the MS program. Obviously, you you did. You you got in. You came. Uh, what went into kind of your process and what would you advise people who are thinking now about applying here? Um, Churchill or Monica, would you like to start with that? Yep, I can go. I think I, I had zero journalism skill, like zero journalism experience, zero. I was studying at negative something probably. Um, and so for me, I was honestly very intimidated about the application process because I felt like I don't have any journalism school like and you're expected to provide some clips like now I know what clips is but I didn't even know what, what that was before and so I felt really intimidated I thought I was probably not going to get in I honestly was like I felt like I was just doing it because I felt you had to do it I honestly that's how I felt and so for me I had to think about okay I'm coming from a different career what are the skill sets I think journalists usually have? And I Googled it, like, what are the skill sets? Literally, what are the skill sets for journalists? And then I try to see in my old career, are there certain things that I can use to highlight myself that can show I have the potential to be this person? And so I know some people are career changes, so I had to find a way to translate, well, you did a reporting. That is the same thing I did with finance. I had to create reports. Same thing I do right now in journalism. So find those strands of doing your life before to make it seem fit the journalism um, aspect of it was hard, but I think it's doable. Another thing was, I know, again, the idea, I have ever written a blog. I That was part of my, my portfolio. Have I ever done anything that required me to write an essay? That was part of my portfolio. I presented all of that as part of who I am, plus my school. So I think if you're a career changer like I was, it can feel a little bit intimidating, but it's doable. You can Your skills do translate. Great advice. And uh, Monica, what about you? Um, sure. So when I was in your position, I scoured the internet, looked at YouTube videos. I was like, somebody please tell me how do I complete? What do I, what are the magic words? What do I have to put on my application? Um, I never found out. So kind of like Churchill, I just like, okay, here's a prayer. Hope it works. Um, I really took my time. I gave myself like two months to really write it, rewrite it, rewrite it. Um, should I put something else? I really, I really, really worked my application. Um, because I wanted to do this program so bad. And I think um, I think maybe the most important thing is to mm, let your self shine through. So why do you want to do journalism? You know? Um, also, is there any journalism that you've seen or documentaries or anything that's related to reporting and news that inspires you? Why? You know, so so that the admissions team understands what. What drives you to want to do journalism? Is it just because, I mean, there's different reasons. Is it the investigative part? What is it, you know, and why? Um, so I I think, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about having incredibly polished clips. I think it's more interesting to know your background and um, why you want to do journalism. But I could be wrong, but this is how my approach was. <laughs> Definitely. I think that's all great advice because it's a program, again, that, that brings in people from all sorts of backgrounds, both like geographically, professionally, educationally. So showing that interest, why you want to be a journalist, if you haven't before, or if you have been what you want to do, like at a more advanced level in the profession, let us know that that story can be very compelling, no matter kind of where you are in your own kind of path right now. Um, so that is definitely what I would suggest as well. Those essays are a really great place to spend the bulk of your time just thinking about how you want to tell your story to us. Well, I'd like to thank everybody. I know we're running up on the hour now. I saw some hands up. Unfortunately, we won't get to a lot of questions today, but um, in the link in the chat right now, you can register for a range of different other admissions events, including ones where you could drop in and just ask our team questions. If you have admissions or educational financing questions, we'll have webinars next week about the MS documentary specialization and the MS investigative specialization, which will go more into depth about those particular programs. Uh, and we'll also have one coming up about the part-time. So there'll be more about the specific other programs we offer with under the MS Within, within the MS umbrella uh, coming up soon too. But I'd like to thank Churchill, Monica, and George for their insights into this great program. And I hope everyone learned a lot. And I look forward to keeping in touch with everyone at upcoming events um, in the future. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.